Since 1887, the Stonington Free Library has been a center for knowledge, ideas, creativity, and entertainment. It is a comfortable and welcoming community space for the town of Stonington, Connecticut, where all ages can explore, discover, gather and learn within a building of distinctive and unique architecture. This video program is an evolution to expand the offerings of the library to share directly in your home or organization. Welcome to the Thoughtful Thursdays speaker series made available to you by the Stonington Free Library. So good evening, everyone. I'm Carla Umland. I'm the Assistant Director at Stonington Free Library. I want to thank you all for being with us this evening, and I want to give special thanks to Rob Reese for presenting this program and for the work he has done to put into it. Also, I'm thankful to our staff and volunteers at the library for their support in organizing this event. We do ask that all participants keep your microphones muted unless you're asking a question. This will minimize disruptions during the presentation. Thank you for that. I am recording the program. All personal information, such as names of participants, will be edited out before the program's uploaded to our YouTube channel. A little bit about our presenter. Rob is an experienced local art teacher who implements lessons using animal ambassadors to demonstrate their unique characteristics with the belief that the animals themselves are the most powerful tool to help us gain respect for nature. I had the privilege of participating in a drawing session that was led by Rob with our SFL Night Club, which is a special program for developmentally challenged adults. We all had a great time being creative and I'm pleased to bring Rob's expertise to our wider SFL community this evening. And now I'll turn it over to Rob Reese, art educator at Denison Pequotsipos Nature Center. Hello there, thank you for that. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're gonna dive right in and, and what the, the way I kind of present and organize my, my class here is um, because I don't know what everybody's ability level is. I kind of uh, uh, touch on a lot of techniques that you can use kind of anywhere, anytime you're drawing anything. And then we specialize, you know, we really focus on drawing the turtle. And we're gonna draw from that photograph that I, uh, I had emailed to you. So, so if you don't have that photograph printed out, it might help to just quickly print it out. Um, if not, you can maybe sh share some space on your screen and have to do it that way. Either way is fine with me. Um, but I have my setup over here. And so I'm going to move the camera just a little bit. And um, I'll get a good view of it here. And take a little bit of the focus off of me. There we go. All right. So that should be pretty good. All right, so, so to get started, let's start with the tools we're gonna to use. We're gonna use a pencil and an eraser. Uh, if you have art pencils, they come in a variety of uh, different colors and, and, and brands and whatnot, but uh, most of them are organized in, in uh, a system of, of LEDs that give you uh, different values. So values are, from dark to light. So this is a 4H. So generally an H is a really light value, right? So I'm shading, that's pretty light. And then um, as you go up, it gets to like an F or a, uh, a B, okay? I think of it as that's a hard lead. And so you're not gonna get a very dark shade of gray, and that's a bold, as in like bold type. So this is a, a 7B. So that was a 4H, this is a 7B. And so there's everything in between, right? So an H is, is a light line or a light shade, 
and a B is a dark shade. Um, so if you have something in between, like this, this is a uh, this is an F. Right in between these two would be an F. I'll put it right here. Right in between these two would be an F, and that looks like that. So you can see how like it's getting gradually darker, right? So if you have something in the middle, like an F or a number two pencil, that'll be fine. If you have a nice um, set of art pencils, that'll be great. Uh, so I would always start my drawings with an H or a 4H or something really light like that. Um, there's actually a drawing already on here, and I know you can't see it, but that's part of the that's part of the trick. So I've already drawn this turtle, and it's a loose sketch, right? But um, I'm going to draw it for you with with Sharpie, and it's going to look like I'm drawing freehand with Sharpie, but actually I'm just tracing over what I've already drawn. So it's a little bit like cheating, but not really. It's pre, it's pre-thinking, pre-drawing. So in any case, so that's the first thing, the pencils, right? Uh, I use a little white pearl eraser, but kneaded erasers work fine. Um, you know, there's lots of different types of erasers you can use. So, all right, so from there. Um, now, when you're starting a drawing, the first thing you do is you think about the whole composition. And I'm just composing this basically the same way this is composed, except for one thing. I'm going to pull, I'm going to make some more space in between the head of my turtle and the, and the photograph, right? I want more space leading him. So anytime you have an object or a turtle or a person looking or moving this way, you want to have a little bit more space on this side than on this side. Okay, that way you look forward in the in the drawing instead of looking back. Does that make sense? So if if I have too little space here, it it seems like I'm talking about what's behind the turtle and not about what's in front. So so in any case. You always leave the turtle with some extra space. So, um, so I'm going to do that. And then, so the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else, I'm actually going to just use little marks and just place the turtle on the page. So it's almost like drawing a map. I'm going to put a little mark there. Like that's where I want his head to be. I'm roughly centering it. And so that's, you know, imagine like that's like right there right his nose. And then I'm going to make another mark for over here. So you notice I'm not drawing right on it. I want to keep that line, but I'm going to line it up right with that, the back of that turtle's foot. It ends up being right about there. So that's where I want him to sit. It's roughly centered. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the, uh, the height. Of the turtle. So this was the length, and I'm going to do the height. But the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to measure it. So if I measure uh, the height like this, and I take my pencil, I'm going to switch to a pencil here real quick. Hold on. I take my pencil and I put the pencil lead right at the top of that turtle shell, and then I kind of drag it over and put my thumb right at the bottom of his foot. It's the highest point and the lowest point. And then I see how many times that fits inside my turtle. It's about twice. You guys see that? Like it's almost exactly twice. So that's what I'm gonna do here, but I have to do it in reverse. So that's my whole width. Now I'm gonna estimate half, right? Where's about half? It's about there. Right, so that's about halfway. So I'm going to measure that the same way. And I'm going to put marks where my turtle, the bottom of my turtle should be. So it's somewhere around there and somewhere right around there. Okay. So and that's, that's rough. Now, anytime you're drawing, anytime you're drawing, 
especially from a photograph, but from real life too, if you're drawing a still life, um, you don't need to worry about drawing everything exactly the way you see it. In fact, that will distract you from making a nice drawing. What actually you should be thinking about is making it so that it's believable, it's natural looking, it's, it's, it's a believable space or a believable form. And if you focus on those things, the little differences between the turtle shapes uh, like the shape of its shell or shape of its head won't matter as much. If you focus on making it, you know, um, look like the turtle shell is over the neck and, and the, the wrinkles are, are this and that and the scales are bumping out a little bit. If you focus on those things, right, then the, the natural part of the turtle will actually come out. Um, and, and it'll feel natural, it'll feel like uh, a, a well done drawing and nobody would, would question it, you know? Um, so nobody's gonna be looking at the photograph and comparing the drawing. They're just gonna look at your drawing and go, oh, wow, that's a nice turtle. All right, so in any case, so that's, I've already mapped it out, right? So I've got the, where it ends on both sides. I've got the top and the bottom roughly where I want it. Now remember that goes all the way down to here and all the way up to here, right? So the turtle shell is somewhere in here. Now, again, when I sketch, I'm doing exactly that. I'm sketching. I'm not really trying to get exactly what I see right away. Instead, I'm going to get something that's believable and then, or at least the right shape or size, and then I can tweak it. I can make changes. So that being said, I'm working with a Sharpie here so you can see what I'm doing. In pencil, it's really hard to see a little line. It just doesn't show up very well, right? And so um, I'm not gonna be able to edit what I do, but I can talk about how to go about doing it. So uh, the next thing to look at, once you have that, I would look at angles. Here's a few to look at. Here we go. So that right there is this turtle. Those lines right there, that's where the turtle's spine is, right? And so that's actually giving you a center reference line for that turtle shell and back. And you'll notice that if we put a, a pencil on it, it's at a downward angle. You guys see that? It's not horizontal, it's going down like that. So, so the first thing I would do is actually try to indicate that angle, okay? In a pencil that would be a light line, I would later on erase, okay? In the drawing, obviously you're gonna see that and that's gonna, you know, we're just gonna have to draw over it, right? So I'd indicate that, that angle. The next thing I, I would indicate is the angle of the head. Like imagine like center of the neck going right up to its nostril, right? What angle is that? And try to get that angle in there too. So for me, that's right about there. Okay. And I haven't drawn the shell yet, so, but I can see it. So you might need to draw the shell in there. And honestly, what I would do is, again, not worry about it too much. I know it's, I know it's back inside this, this line about an inch and a half or so. So I can put a little mark there and about two or three inches on this side, right? For the head, so I can put a little mark there. And then just loosely, I would just, just fill in, see what, see what, you know, a little sketchy line, see if you can, you can place a shell in there. So that's where my shell is gonna be. That's where my head is, okay? I'm gonna imagine a line straight down from its nose. For our purposes, I'm gonna draw it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna imagine that line here and try to place that foot too, you know, which is gonna be roughly right in there, okay? Same with this foot here. 
This goes all the way back to this line. That was our original plan and that we're gonna stick with it. So that foot is right in there somewhere. Okay. All right, so we have a foot here. Let's see if we can get that angle in there too, right? So let's do that. There's an angle there and there's two angles here. Right, so we're working out some angles there. So that's that. I think those are the ones that you really need to establish, kind of in the, at the beginning. If if that's too if that's too much, like um, if you need to, you can draw more of this first and then do the angles. But here's the thing. Right now, we've only really been drawing for about a minute or so, two minutes. If there was something we needed to change, it's easy to change it now. If we start drawing details in here and then realize that there's something that we need to change, then it's gonna be really hard, right? So we're actually making like a map or a scaffold for our drawing to sit on. And, um, and that'll improve our drawing a lot later on. So we're, we're planning right now. All right. so. So when I draw, you always draw from uh, big to small. And what that means is that you're drawing the big shapes, big angles, big lines, big values, whatever it is, right? And you're focusing on them and, and getting them correct or the way you want them the placement, you're focusing on the whole thing before you get into little things. So first focus on the shape of the turtle and then focus on maybe the shape of the really big scoots in here. And then focus on maybe the, the shape of the, the legs and the head and then maybe the, the scales and the pattern in the shell. Right, so we're going from big things and gradually working our way down to smaller things. Okay, so let's go back to the shell. Uh, like I said, it's already drawn here and I kind of sketched it in. So, but I noticed that the highest point in the shell is right about there, right? So, so I'm going to put that point right about there. And I'm gonna start working my way down like that. And I'm just trying to get, and it's also, I know it's like a little, like flattens out right there. So I wanna get that indicated as well, like that it's rounded, but then flattens out. So that's kind of like the, the hallmark of a turtle, box turtle shell is that they're, they're kind of rounded, but they're also kind of flattened out. Um, and then, I also notice that it flares out here, right? That is flaring out like that. So I'm gonna indicate that a little bit too. So again, I'm going from, from large to small. I'm, I'm focusing on what's, what's big, okay? And not getting bogged down in details yet. If I have to fix this a little bit, that's no big deal. And look what I'm doing here. So, so there's, there's like an angle there that I want to compare. I wanna look at it. And so I'm gonna use my, my pencil or my marker in this case as a, as a tool to do that. So that's my shell. Um, so you can see like that's the high point. It kind of slopes down gradually. It kind of flattens there. So we have all these, all these secondary angles we can put in there. On the turtle, it look like that, right? Okay, so is it perfect? Probably not, you know, it's probably not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. It just needs to look uh, natural. It just needs to look natural. Uh, box turtles, by the way, are called box turtles because they can, they can fit 
their head, uh, legs and head and tail inside their shell and then close the bottom of their shell up tight against the, the top of the shell. So that's the, the carapace and the bottom is called the plastron. So you see a little bit of it right there. So that can actually move. And their shell is made of bone. So that's kind of interesting too. All right, so the next step is, this, is the head, right? And I would, I would do the same thing. I would like, you know, first you're, you're drawing kind of loose and you're just kind of putting it in there, just trying to get the right, you know, um, basic shape and make sure it's placed right. And then go in and say, okay, well, actually there's like a, a flattened part it's like a lip on this and then a flattened part there that's not quite the same angle. And then it goes up a little bit. And then there's like a fold of skin right here. So hopefully you can see that. So there's a fold of skin. So this line is gonna follow the curve of that turtle's um, neck. Right, and so that's actually really important because without that, it would look flat. With that little curve, it's gonna make the turtle look more three-dimensional. So I have mine exaggerated a little bit, but it'll still work, okay? And then the line we actually need is a little under that. And then I noticed that there's little, little bump, so that's pretty straight, and then a bump, and then another bump, right? So pretty straight, and then a bump, and then another bump. And we can get a pretty good turtle head out of that, okay? And then we're gonna come around to the bottom. Here's another angle. Here's another angle to look for, All right? So, Putting that all in there and there, so we have that, that turtle's shaped just right. And then we're gonna bring that in. Now I'm stopping before I get to the shell because I'm seeing that this shape bumps in to another shape. You guys see that? So that's really important to look for. When you're drawing these things, you're kind of drawing big to small, but you're also drawing like close to far. So, so I'm seeing that this, this um, the head and neck are actually just a little bit behind this leg. And so we need to not make sure we don't draw over the leg. Um, now you're using a pencil. So if you want to, you can just draw straight through it, but just, and then erase later. Um, but just make sure that you're, you're making up indications of where things are in front and where things are behind, right? So here we go. This is like a kind of a natural curve here. So I'm just gonna kind of rough in a curve. All right. And then I noticed that there's a few different things happening here. So I'm outlining on this to make it a little bit easier to see. Hopefully that's helping. And you can interrupt anytime you want. If you want me to slow down, if you want me to do that again, if you want me to say it again, or you missed it, anything. So just interrupt and, and let me know. But in any case, but you see how it starts way down here at the bottom and almost in the middle of the shell, right? It doesn't start out here, okay? Uh, one of the things that, that you learn as you learn to draw is you learn that you use your brain in different ways all the time. And a lot of people use one side of their brain, the left side, more often than the other. Now my sketch is not perfect here. I'm noticing some little details here that are wrong, but that's okay. All right, so um, in any case, so that's basically flat and there's a little angle and then that's almost 
straight up and down. And so I'm trying to match those angles here. Let's see that along with this curve. And then his, his toe kind of disappears. This is Clyde the turtle, by the way. So he's a real turtle at the nature center. And I took this picture with my cell phone and he would not stay still. You think a box turtle, right? Move slow. Yeah, but that's not slow enough for the camera. So this was the, the best, most clear, least blurry picture I could get. So, <laughs> so um, but in any case, try to match those, uh, try to match those angles uh, the best you can. Right, right underneath there. And you'll notice it, it kind of looks funny, to be honest. Like my drawing right now looks a little funny, but that is how it goes. Um, and we can be confident because we know that when we measured, right? Um, we know we measured and we know we like mapped it out. So, so we can be kind of confident about where things are, right? And be a little bit more bold than normal. Um, now I can go next to the back leg here and, um, you know, again, there's an angle, right? I need to follow. If you get into a spot where like the, the angle, sorry, if you get into a spot where like you seem to measure and it doesn't seem to fit no matter what, uh, it's probably, it's probably the angles that you have wrong. It's something fundamental in the beginning of the drawing that is a little askew. And so a lot of times you can fix that um, by fixing a little, a little angle issue. So I'm roughing in, I'm roughing in these three little toes here. There's a tiny little toe there. There's a toe here that's really hard to see. But that's a claw right there. And then that is a claw right here. So hopefully that helps you see it a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of really rough those in. And, um, and that'll help me get the rest of it drawn there. And you see how this kind of was up over it, right? To make that shape. So then when I, when I flatten all that out and make it something like that. So what I did down there is like when something overlaps, so when the right here where the toe overlaps the, uh, the rest of the leg, okay? You have to indicate that down here. See that toe shape is a little bit off. There we go, that's better. Okay, you have to indicate that down there with a, a partial line, it doesn't go all the way across. If we went all the way across, it would like cut it off, right? And then I think that this is a little bit too short. I think actually it needs to be down here. So I'm gonna move it all the way down there. All right, so, so that's our, our big drawing, right? We have the turtle basically drawn in there, but it's not, it's not accurate in the sense that like, like there's little things like this could be bulged a little bit, right? Like it seems like that goes up a little bit like that. So we could, we could uh, change the shapes of things a little bit here and there, okay? And so this is the time when like you stop, you have the big shapes and you stop and evaluate them and fix them if they need to be fixed, right? I haven't drawn any details. If I was just drawing uh, on my own, um, this maybe represents about uh, 10, 15 minutes of drawing, right? Uh, right now it's, it's 5.30, so we're about halfway. We're, believe it or not, we only have about five, 10 more minutes of demonstration left. And then after that, the last 20 minutes or so um, 
is you drawing and, and, and asking me questions. You can ask me to show you that again or something like anything like that. Uh, but before we stop, before I stop rather, uh, I'm gonna talk about the scoots. So the, the scales on the shell are called scoots. And we're gonna figure out how to draw those in. So the best way to do it is to simplify and to map it. So simplify what you're looking at. What you're seeing right here is a, uh, a scoot that there's one there, one there, and one there. So there's five actually that go down the center of the turtle's back. Okay, you can't see the fifth one, it's back here. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four of them that you can see. And then we're gonna indicate some, some angles in between. You guys see that? That's gonna help us, those angles. That's gonna help us draw this. It's gonna help us break it down. There's three angles. The angles in between those major scoots there. All turtles have, except for one, all turtles have um, 13, roughly that, uh, sorry, the ref, that was referring to the angle. Uh, all turtles have 13 large scoots on their shelves. And scoots, by the way, are scales that have been modified, right? Um, and then uh, that's the same number as full moons in a year, which is why a lot of um, early American peoples uh, used turtle shells for calendars that could keep track of full moons. So, so that's our map for these scoots. So I'm looking really closely. It's hard to see. It's like right in here, there's the line in between scoots. And I'm drawing on the photograph, like once I draw it, once I do that, like it's hard to see the, the intricacies of the photograph, but of the shell, but it's easier to see where the scoot is while I'm drawing it. So, um, so you kind of work those in like, okay, so it goes, a little low there, and there's, you know, I'm just kind of eyeballing it where it must go. And I think, you know, if I have it pretty close, I'm doing pretty good. It's a little off. It's not the end of the world. The biggest, the biggest, the most important part is getting, I think this one's a little, I just drew it a little too far over. Um, the most important part is just getting these, these angles in there, right? And that way it looks more realistic, right? And then in between, right, at the low part, the low point of these, that's where the, the next scoot is. And it goes all the way down like that. So there's Big scoot right there. Another one here and another one here. Right? So then I kind of draw that in. Just go, okay, break down that scoot. That's roughly there and that's roughly there. Is it perfect? I think my turtle shell got a little bit flattened, just a tiny bit. I think if I was going to. Do this again, I might make it just a tiny bit taller, but that's pretty close. And it kind of comes up like that. But again, nobody's going to be looking at the shell or at the photograph, rather. And then there's other little scoots here. So that's there. There's a scoot here, here, there, there. Okay, so we break it down. We start start working them in. 
See, I'm going to bring that out a little bit. Okay. Bring that out a little bit. That's all right. About there, you see, I'm like, I'm kind of breaking down one scoot at a time. I'm judging where it is on the, on the scoot above it. So how do the two scoots interact? That's what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm not gonna get worried too much about exactly right. I'm more worried about getting the right number of them and getting angles right. Okay, and kind of realistically showing how they interact with each other. What I mean is like this scoot is at the low point of this one, right? This division, right? Margin is at the low point of this scoot, right? Same, same pattern as up here, right? The low point. And so getting that natural looking is actually more important than getting every little detail right. Okay. But you see how already it, that looks like a pretty good turtle shell. Okay. Then if I go here, the next tricky part is the is the um the scales. And I would again just kind of on the legs, I mean. I would break down just a few of them. And I actually would not draw all of them. I would draw these five or six maybe, and then, and then just indicate the rest with texture bumps and not try to draw them. So what does that look like in practice? So here we go. We're going to take that and we're going to break that down. We're going to put a scoop right in here, sorry, not a scoop, a scale right in there. And we're gonna pay real close attention to how scales sit next to each other. And we're gonna pay more attention to that than how they, exactly how big they are, or exactly where they're placed. Because what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that by the end of our little drawing here, that we have something that's believable. Now you can't see everything because the, the, um, the line in the Sharpie is really thick, but and then we can tweak, we can tweak this. Now there are actually claws on this foot that the photograph is not picking up, um, but they're on there. Same here, there's a claw on that foot, there's a claw on this foot, and there's a really tiny one right there. And the last tricky spot is up here in the face. Now this is gonna be hard for the Sharpie to do, but um, I'll, I'll try to make it clear. So right here, this is the bump on the back side of the turtle's head, right? This is the bump that, uh, goes over its eye. So you wanna see, and then this, there's a little shape right there, a little shadow there. That's the shadow of the bump on this side. So you wanna pay close attention there because really those two things should line up with each other, right? So you wanna make sure that that shadow lines up just right with the bump on that side of the face. And then there's a, a shadow here where it goes over his eye and then his eye shape is right in here. The pupil, the pupil, by the way, is facing that way. And so it enlarged, right? Enlarged, it would look something like this. You have that, the eye shape flattened on the bottom and then the pupil is like this, okay? And that's basically its eye shape. And then there's a shadow up here in the front, kind of wrapping around. And then there's a, a shadow 
kind of like his eyebrow right in there. And then texture right there in the back. And all this wrinkles and texture. And you know, it's the old man look that Clyde's got going on for him. So that's basically his eye. Kind of had to blow that up because there's no, there's no way for me to draw that with the Sharpie that small. Then last but not least, and I'm almost done, but last but not least is the shapes inside here and his camouflage. Um, it's really interesting, but Clyde has some letters on his, <laughs> on his back. Um, so this is pretty much the letter A, you know, turtle style, right? But, and that's way too big, um, but these shapes really can be pretty much anything um, because all box turtles have different shapes. And so you really can get creative with this um, and you can loosen up because it really could be anything. Um, it seems to me like, like there's sort of a pattern where this shape, excuse me, this shape, this shape, and this shape look like versions of each other, right? So you might be able to add that in. Um, with some of the classes that I do, you know, um, we really get creative and we do, you know, we do like literally different patterns. You know, we make this sillier or funnier or put polka dots on it or something like that. Um, so you can get creative and, and make that however great if you want to get. Um, and then last but not least, and this really is the last thing, uh, we didn't draw in the rest of his last run there. So that goes right in there. Okay. So hopefully that helped. So I'm going to let you guys keep drawing. And um, and uh, you can you can ask me any questions you want. I can show you something over again. Uh, it's always it's always uh, tricky to be drawing and talking at the same time. Sometimes I think I'm making sense, and uh, I'm really not. So if you need me to you know start all over and and do it again, I really I really. Um, sincerely don't mind doing that. So, um, but anyway, so draw for a few minutes and then uh, I really like it when people show me some of their drawings, even if it's just for a moment. And so I'll be looking to see, um, looking to see if anybody is, you know, brave enough to show me some drawings there. We do have a question in the chat from Susan. Sure. Can you tell me if the scales are just circles or have depth? So um, they don't have a lot of depth. There's a very small amount. So um, for example, this is, is concave, you know, like if we were going to, draw that you know all by itself it would be it would be like a con concave shape so that's why this is doing that so his actual shell is not perfectly round like that it's going up and then kind of down in the middle and then down and you know um so this pretty much bumps out but there's texture here like these are textural lines that the turtle gains as it gets older. And you can see these ones, if you look closely, they're, they're doing, you know, they're doing a curve like this. And that's because the shell is actually curving in a little bit there. So it's, it's doing all sorts of things. It's going like that there, it's going like that there. So there's lots of movement and uh, texture and, and, and form inside that shell. I hope that's what you meant. 
Oh, are they circles? Oh, okay. Oh, on the uh, foot. Yeah. On the foot. I'm sorry. Well, no. So uh, in the drawing, right, they're, sorry, in the photograph, they're different shapes. There are some that look like circles or some that look like um, maybe more like squares or diamonds. Um, over here, I kind of roughed those shapes out because it's such a, it's a small detail for the Sharpie to handle, but um, but I would, I would draw it basically like this. If, if you have uh, a scale going down like this and, you know, on the outside of it, it's like kind of, it's kind of smooth. And then to some degree it, it gets uh, more, more pointy, I guess, on the top. And the reason is because the, the other scale is actually kind of sitting on top of it, even if it's just a little bit. And so it can have different, different shapes, right? Um, so it all depends on what, where, how the scales are sitting on each other. Susan says, okay, that makes sense. Thanks. And okay. <laughs> Catherine asks, does he have a tail? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not showing though in the photograph. You can certainly add it, but they do have tails. He must have had it tucked in. Unless I'm just not seeing it in the... No, yeah. So he's also got, he's also somehow hiding his two other feet. Because that's a leaf. So I think his other feet are, are in here somewhere behind the shell. Catherine says, thank you. And Victoria asks, can you recommend a good pencil sharpener? Um, sure. I use a mechanical pencil sharpener. It's um, what's this one? What is that? Postage? Yeah, looks like the classic. Yep. Brand. Um, there's also, you know, uh, there's old timer tricks that like you use a you, it's actually not too bad to use a pocket knife to sharpen your pencils. I know that sounds like, you know, nature center uh, <laughs> or roughing it or something, but, but actually it gives you, it can give you like a flat lead and that can make a nice, uh, a nice sharp line. So, so there is some advantages there. Um, and some, some drawing kits sometimes come with sandpaper, little pads of sandpaper. And that's actually to do the same thing, to flatten out the lead so you can get a really sharp line. And Victoria says, thanks. Mm -hmm. And I'll be brave and share my drawing. Turn my camera on here. Get a little bit of text. Okay. Cool, that looks good. I like it. I mean, I, I mean, I'm trying to see if I can get the other views to show up larger here. Should be possible. Yeah, if you do um, gallery yeah. view. Right. I see. Yeah, I switched it. That should help. Another comment, Inga says, thank you for this class. You mentioned more classes. Can you tell me more? When are they? So I guess, uh, does the Nature Center have ongoing classes? Uh, so it's not so much ongoing. Um, it was, it was uh, pretty busy there in the middle of COVID with, the, the, uh, the, with Zoom lessons like this. Um, but soon, uh, in the next 
probably in the next couple of months, we'll start um, probably a small series of classes at the Coogan Farm or at the Nature Center. Um, so I would just look, look for it on the website uh, for the Nature Center. A lot of times what we do is we have like a live owl and, and then we do the same style lesson, but with a live bird. Uh, so that's nice and it's hard to do on Zoom. It doesn't work out, but. Rob? Yes. Um, I, I, I'm not sure you can't see me, uh, but I'm Mark Vermilia and my picture has disappeared. I don't know how to fix that. Wait a minute. Unable to start video. The host, you've stopped the video or something. Uh, oh. There I am. Oh, there you go. I was going to show you my turtle. Oh, great. Oh, nicely done. Oh, nice. Oh, you did the background too. You're ambitious. <laughs> nice job. I love it. That was really fun. And, and when I did it with light pencil, I was just being really creative on the shell. And then yeah. you, I was impatient. I'm one of those people, I guess. And then you did with the marker on your drawing, the outlines of the, of the plates. And I thought, yeah. wow, I would only waited. And I'm like, hey, I'm in pencil. I can just do over. That's right. You're literally right over it. <laughs> That's great. That's well, you know, so, so, sometimes I think the biggest thing is like just to relax and have fun and you end up with a, a nice drawing, you know, if you're like stressing, you know, it's, it's harder. So it's good. Just it's enjoy really it. Um, I, hope will, I hope you will come back with maybe another animal photo for us. All right, we will do. <laughs> I agree. The owl sounds intriguing. Oh, no, I heard a voice, but I'm not sure. All I heard was DPNC. Hello. So, Lucia, I put in a request for you to unmute, so you might see a button that you can click to unmute. Oh, there you are. I think we can hear you. I don't hear Hold it up just a little bit. Yeah, you're showing your turn. Oh, nice. Very nice. Oh, good. Nice job. I like that. Unfortunately, we can't hear you, but it does look yeah. like your microphone is enabled. I'm not sure. Maybe it's uh, something. It the yeah, the computer's I microphone, know. I guess. You could try to type it into the chat, and then we can read it out. In the meantime, does anyone else want to share anything? Rob, did you have anything yeah. to add about um, adding color or using pastels or pencils? So, so, um, I mean, sure, I can, I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're using pencil for the most part. Um, I guess what I would focus on is the same idea uh, when you're drawing big to small is to focus on like the overall color or the overall value. So value is like shades of gray. So if I was going, if I was going to, um, to shade that, I would start by like mapping in like a whole large shade, a whole large area of one value. Even though it's not exactly the same value, I would start like that because it helps map out um, big, big things, right? And really you're gonna focus on like getting the, um, getting the values to change gradually. So we actually have a, 
We have another drawing if you want to see it real quick. It's right here. And then in the meantime, Inga has her drawing ready. Oh, Can you see it? Oh, nice job. I can see it. Yeah, that looks nice. Oh, thanks. The first time I ever did it. <laughs> so this is a great. Thank you. This is an old sketch of Clyde from years ago that I did for a class, but um, but you can see like, I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see like it's, it's kind of mapped out in, in, in shades, right? And then I did the whole shell dark and then erased out the, um, the lighter shades inside his shell and then layered that with, with pencil lines for texture. So I don't know if that is exactly what you were thinking of, but, um, but that's a pretty solid way to do it. Even if you're using color is to, is to map out large pieces and then, and then kind of layer on texture afterwards. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi, we're on, we're on a class right now. Hi. So <laughs> this is my my son being curious. Yes, that's great. <laughs> Does anyone else want to uh, ask any questions or share their drawing? I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then it looks like Susan also has her video that's going. All right, you gotta go. Have you met Clyde the turtle? <laughs> oh, very nice. That came out nice. All right, then you gotta go. Oh, it's only like two minutes. Two I'm minutes. Gonna it. All right, come on. I'm gonna ask a, wait, I'm gonna a quick question. It. Go ahead, Susan. On his wrinkles on his neck, because like this is very new to me. I, I don't usually draw, but um how would you just the lines just make wrinkly lines like i'm not i'm not an artist so i just doing so, it fun, but to make it look more like a neck so what i would do <laughs> so, hold on Give me two Sorry, seconds. he's very young and he just started kindergarten so he's very uh he's very tired yeah life is oh. exciting <laughs> so i'm gonna put this other piece of paper on here real quick All right, so, so what I would do, because his, his, his neck is, is oh, yeah, his neck is something like that, right? And we want it to look like it's got wrinkles. So what we have to do is we have to kind of exaggerate and, and do it kind of like that, right? But not quite so uniform. Does that make sense? So no, yeah, yeah, it does. I just exactly wasn't quite sure. Same. So we have to kind of like exaggerate that a little bit and get that to um, look kind of natural. And that's what that's like. That's what I mean. Like when you're when you're drawing, sometimes it's distracting to try to get it exactly like that. It's easier to get it to look natural and, and not have to worry about every little detail in the photo. So okay. hopefully point. that helps. Yeah. It does. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, brands of pencils. So I have uh, a Generals. I kind of mix and match whatever I can find. And this uh, Derwent graphic 
both make good pencils. Um, this is less good, but you know, I picked it up, but both of those companies make good, good products. Um, yeah, I think those are the two, the two I get. And I, you know, I just go to Michael's, you know, it's not like, or Amazon. <laughs> so yeah, Derwent and, um, and General, so the two I use. Great, thank you. Does yeah. anyone else have any questions they would like to ask before we wrap things up? I think we all really enjoyed this time to be creative. And uh, I know that my turtle looks more like a turtle than any time I've ever tried before. So that's, that's <laughs> that sounds like success. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it sounds like um, everyone enjoyed their time and would like to do some more drawing. So that's excellent. Great. Excellent. All well, right. Thank you so much, Rob, for joining us. And well, thank uh, you for having us, having uh, me. Our pleasure and um let's see sarah did you want to add anything you're giving us a thumbs up that's great i'm yeah. going to ask you to unmute and you should have a button that you can yeah there, I, go. there you go yeah um i like to paint but i'm you know i always have the drawing part is harder <laughs> and when you measured when you measured um i didn't get the picture of the turtle so i was using your picture on the screen okay and um you measure like the foot um has to be this you know a certain percentage of the body right i mean right you kind of measure it with your pencil correct so so what i do is i you kind of make a um what i do is i i, I put an end point where i want the drawing to end in terms of like like the tip of the head mm -hmm. and the the tip of the tail or whatever is in the back right Yep. And then, and then I kind of break that down into like about half of that or about a third of that, about a fourth. I'm like making fractions yeah. and angles at the same time to like kind of map out. And that way it kind of, it kind of creates like, essentially it creates a map of the turtle. And then I kind of draw over that map. So there's other ways to do it. Um, but that, you know, and, and like, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Measuring. And yeah. Right. Another way is like to pick a smaller piece, like pick like one scoop mm -hmm. and measure everything against that scoop. So mm -hmm. you take the, your pencil and you, and you line it up with the scoop, right? And then you like literally compare, oh, it's two scoots, it's three scoots, it's a half a scoop, you know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's another way to do it too. Very good. Great. Yeah, I'd like All right. to take another okay. course. John added, thank you, Rob. Enjoyed the class. Excellent. So great. Everyone have a great night and be well and keep creating. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks.